Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. A hand from uh, Orleans Casino. Orleans uh, in one, Vegas? Yes. All right. Yes, in Vegas. Orleans is where uh, they one, play three. a lot of Omaha 8. So if you play in the Orleans, you probably had two or three like 8, 16, 08 games going on around you. Yes, and they play that. And now like the 15, 30, they've been playing a lot too. That's kind of been getting going. Yeah. The, so. the, the, anytime you ever see an 08 game where it's a three chip, six, trick, six chip, people have been asking me recently a lot about limit poker. Three, three chip, six chip structure or a two chip, four chip structure, like a 10, 20, and it's a split pot game. Usually you're the youngest on the table by like 50 years if you're like 35 years old. But uh, uh -huh. I do have a couple friends that actually play that 816 game. Um, I've actually wanted to go there just to screw around and play it. I don't know if you know that I play basically the 100, 200 at the World Series when it goes. So 816 would be a, oh, little, uh -huh. bit, a little bit small for me, but uh, I, I do love 08 and I've, I've wanted to come down there. But uh, Orleans 1 3, what's the buy in structure? Is it a 500 cap or? Uh, yes, 500 cap. Okay, 500 cap. Okay. All right. Uh, in this hand, uh, let's see, the uh, the effective stack is 650. 650, okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see, there's a under the gun limp. Okay. Uh, middle position raised to 12. And then I'm on the button with ace of spades, ace of clubs. A spades, ace of clubs. Okay. Yes. Yep. yep. Uh, I three bet to thirty-five. Okay, it's a little bit on the smaller side, but I will say okay. that I do find that people that are weaker than me post flop sometimes I actually want to keep them in with hands that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily like whereas you would nest, you would sometimes size up like in a in a situ in a given situation you're on position so you're supposed to actually size up a little bit on the larger side. Okay. But if I know that somebody is going to call VPIP way too much against a three bet, then I would size up. So, you know, there's a little room well, yeah, to maneuver your three bet sizing, depending on what you want to have accomplished here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, and actually the, the middle position who raised to just a little quick note on him, he's, um, he's very, very capable. Like I've had a lot of history with this guy, mm -hmm. um, made good, big lay downs and like correctly. And he's, he's a very good player. So I definitely did want to keep him in because I, I thought he, he would fold. Uh, okay. but that was kind of my thinking there. Okay. Um, so anyway, so after that, the, uh, the big buying goes all in for $5. <laughs> so the hand before that, yeah. The hand before he had basically got stacked and was left five bucks, and so he didn't okay. um, reload. So, but actually, that kind of plays into the hand my thinking like later. Okay. So he's all in for five, undergun folds, and the middle position calls. So MP1 calls. So you've got like <laughs> we have but like we ha bucks. we we have like yeah like seven like like fifteen. To tw no, we have twenty dollars in the main and fifty on the side, but we'll call the pot seventy-five. Okay. Okay. Go to the flop. Uh, the flop is uh, ten of diamonds, ten of spades, mm -hmm. two of hearts. Ten of diamonds, ten of spades, two of hearts. So you have ace of spades, ace of clubs, one limp, MP one to twelve. You three bet to thirty-five. Big blinds all in, basically for the big blind, right? Uh, right, right. And then the MP one calls and your heads up. Ten, ten, deuce, rainbow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, middle position check. Mm -hmm. um, I bet thirty-five. Okay. And then the uh, middle position raises to a hundred. So just one thing about sizing here. I mean, mm -hmm. you're at, you're at six fifty effective, so you do want to get some money in here. There's something to note specifically about aces. When you hold aces, it means that someone has less of a chance that they're going to have an ace high. So we can look at that in a number of different ways because some nits won't defend even with ace queen off, so it's irrelevant. So when you have two aces and you know some guy defends, they're going to be more pocket pair heavy. Other people right. might be defending with more ace highs, but like on this specific texture, it's one of these things where um, 
you know, betting sort of on the smaller side will encourage a lot of ace high calls, I feel like, now on paired boards. But when you have mm -hmm. aces, people aren't going to have that many ace highs. So, mm. you know, you look at this and sometimes... So it should have been a bigger bet. Well, I, you know, again, like the, the the new school no limit theory is, is that this guy's going to have more tens than you are, so you're supposed to reflect in a smaller bet. But I think live sort of stakes optimal, as I talked about, my thinking would be he's probably going to be a little bit more pocket pair heavy. I don't think he's ever folding a pocket pair. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you, and specifically, you have two aces. Whereas if you have like two kings mm -hmm. or two queens, you might have some more ace highs. But you bet 35 here in a 75. Mm -hmm. Also, too, like people, you know, betting 50 in a 75, even though it's a two-third pot size bet, in live poker, it's more of just a $50 bet. You don't really start getting up into percentages until you have the hundreds. And then when you get the pots really big, then you could be betting 400 in a 2,000, and that's a huge bet because it's a numbers, absolute money gotcha. amount. Um, but, okay, mm -hmm. so you bet 35, you raise to 100. On a rainbow board... I mean, you just have a pure call here. Mm -hmm. and, and normally what I would expect right. here is that someone's not going to fast play off a 10 all that much. And uh, your call is going to be probably followed by a check quite often. Really what you want to see here is you want to see, you know, you call the check raise and he either checks the turn or he follows up with like a bet that is the same or less than the check raise size. You call again and then he checks the river, you bet and you get your value that way. That's, that's sort of the the golden sort mm. of low stakes hand reading rules of live poker. I'm assuming you called. Uh, yes, I called. Okay. And I, yeah, at this moment I, I didn't actually, I didn't believe that he was uh, fast playing a 10. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I, I thought more along the lines, yes, of pocket pairs. Like I thought possibly he could be doing this with like an ace king. I know now, I mean, looking back at it, yes, I had two of the aces. Um, maybe like a king queen suit, and he was just trying to get me off the pot. But I, anyway, yeah, so I called. I I doubt it. I really doubt it. First of all, ace yeah. king. People don't what. Very uh, yeah, I, again. This is one of these things where it's just you're not going to see somebody check raise with ace king. They'll call with it, right? It's the nut no pair. Mm -hmm. uh, king queen mm -hmm. suited with a backdoor is similar, where I think they're going to call quite a bit instead of check raise. Mm -hmm. Um, check raises sort of mm, kind of represent pairs that, that want to like think that you have ace king, like eights, nines, jacks, queens, something like that is more right. can, can, than what that's, I would yeah. think is a check raise. Yeah, I guess so. Cause that's what I was thinking though too. Yeah. Maybe he was just trying to get me off of like an eight king or something like that. Um, so I guess, uh, the turn, mm -hmm. um, comes the king of clubs. Okay. Yep. Um, so after that, uh, middle position bets 170. 170? Yes. That's interesting. So the pot moving to the turn is like 275. And mm -hmm. you've committed, you know, you've got like maybe 500 left. And now he's betting 170 into 270. I mean, I'm still not folding now, but mm -hmm. I would say that it's interesting. Uh, if nothing changes and then he just moves all in again, I, I think that we could probably go call fold here. Um, it would re you'd really be nitty to just fold now, but I think that we could, okay. you know, at this point when he bets 170, he's you, if you were to call, the pot would be, you know, uh, let's see, it's 275. Okay. We said it was 275 to the turn, so 340 plus 270 would be like 600. And you guys would have like 350 left. So if he just went 350 all in on the river on a blank, I, I think you could probably find a fold. But I'm still not not necessarily in the camp of folding now. So he bets 170. I assume you called. Uh, yeah, I called. Okay, so we said the pot's like a little over 600, 600 maybe 610, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, we'll move the river. Uh, the river comes the king of diamonds. King of diamonds. Okay. It's interesting. I thought at the time that was like the worst card for me. Um, I mean, because I thought, again, looking back, I realized, yeah, he doesn't really have ace king. At the time, though, I was thinking ace king, ace king. Actually, even when the king came out, I thought maybe he had the king's full. Um, that made it less likely, I guess, on the river, obviously. Uh, but anyway, that's where we were at. Okay. Um, so he goes all in for, for 345 or 350. All right. So now 
uh, MP1 all in for 350, 350 into like 610. So the pot is going to be yeah. about 960, and it's going to be about 350 for you to call. Here's the thing that's really weird about this hand. I'm not saying the guy's bluffing, but it's very strange. See, see, you obviously think that somehow a king X in his range, and I don't. I think that the king is irrelevant to his hand. At this level, I would really expect a whole lot of checking here to go on. If if the opponent had a pocket deuces, which would have to assume mm -hmm, that the opponent's right. even going to raise over the top. With, I mean, people are usually limping in that level. And then called your three bet. They're not going to bet the river. A 10 is going to be scared and is probably not going to bet the river. Now it's 10, 10, king, king, even though it doesn't really change all because mm -hmm. it doesn't really change your hand all that much either, right? Like if he's trying to get value from queens, jacks, or aces, you just don't mm -hmm. see somebody jam a 10 here. They're scared. The board's double paired and they've got the bottom part of the, the, the full house. Uh, unless he has king 10 specifically. But then you'd go and you'd be right. like, oh, is he going to bet 170 on the turn when he's full? Right. So right. I almost would rather not see the king, have the river come off like a three, have him bet 350 oh. all in and let us make a fold here, than have mm -hmm. this king come. I feel like it's almost more of a call now. I'm not saying it's necessarily a call, but I wonder if mm -hmm. he might ever be overplaying something here or he's making some sort of weird bet where he doesn't know what to do. Um, mm. it, you know, I, I don't know if it could ever be like jacks or queen. It, it's just, it's very strange for the thick value that he's representing to get basically get counterfeit in the river and, and him still bet. Now, there are wacky things that happen. And, mm. you know, you might call and you might have a 10 and you just didn't necessarily know what to do. But it's very peculiar. I would be very confused here. Um, I would be right. very, very, conf uh, I would be very, very confused here. But like I said, I've made calls like this before and have been turned over. Like, you know, I, I call the guys like you're good. And he turns over a 10, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. He thinks, right, he, he right. thinks, he thinks when you call, he loses, he was... but he didn't know what to do. Right. So it, it's, it's, right. it's a weird sort of spot. It's very Sometimes at these stakes, though, man, I, I see some weird shit. And, uh, you know, getting almost three to one, I, I, I sometimes will talk myself into a call. Like I said, I, I'd almost rather feel more comfortable folding here on a blank, like a three okay. or a four or something like that. What did you, what ended up happening? What did you do? Uh, so I did end up folding. Okay. Um, part of actually, though, what went into my mind was I was like, and this came back in, I was like, there was an all-in player. So I was like, well, I'm going to see the hand, you know, and I feel like if maybe that wasn't the case, I could have found a call. I didn't, you know, if I would have thought about it through a little bit more, uh, but I ended up folding the big blind under the, that was all in had Queens for the main pot and the middle position had Jack for the side pot. Wow. So MP1 has Jack, Jack. So did he think he was so, value he betting or bluffing? He did, and I like. I, I think you hit it on the head, though. I don't think he knew even where he was at at the very end, because he said when the king came out, he just was going all in, praying I didn't have a king. Yeah, and I wonder, I wonder what would have happened if the river was like a three. Like I feel like if the river was like right. a three, he would he would check. So it's it's a weird. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's sort of what my census kind of brought off. It was a re, it's a really weird river. And mm -hmm. if he were to check on a three, right? So let's say the river's a three and he was going to check. You can see now why I'm saying I would feel a lot more comfortable folding if the river was a three and he moved all in. Because if the river was a three and he had jacks, he would check. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's, it, yeah, it, it's the whole thing is kind of weird. I don't, I mean, I don't think it's too big of a mistake to fold because you're going to accidentally lose sometimes. But what a strange, mm -hmm. strange run out. And and again, I I would say that he might make this move with a ten, thinking he doesn't have the best hand, and it's just one of those things. It's just clicking buttons, if you know what I mean. If, yeah. if you know what that yeah. the word clicking buttons is, they just don't know what they're doing. So you try to bluff right. catch against them, and it's like they don't know, but you accidentally <laughs> lose, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that happens. I, I basically that's my biggest thing here is playing there. I've been playing a lot like last year at the Orleans, but yeah, basically I. I'm value owning myself a lot, though, too. Just, I don't know. 
doing the same, you know, just trying to get that in value, trying to use the bet fold. No, I mean that's I mean that's gonna be your bread. Yeah, that's gonna be your bread and butter. I, th- I think you just got a little bit unlucky with this run out, but I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out crushlivepoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.